Friday, Saturday, Sunday. His first duty station in New Smyrna, he leaves his POV there. He gets to take a car home. In case you got to call in early, somebody gets sick, hey, I need you to own it. I think you'd be more and more receptive to it if I don't have to burn my gas 50 miles round trip, I can use a county vehicle. Yeah, how do we know we're going to call him? Is he going to take a vehicle? No, no he's working that weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let, let these guys take home their cars when they're working. You know, I, I think that would solve most of the problems. Night shift, there's only two guys working. I'm talking guys working day shift on the beach, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Lee works Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm just using him for example because he's sitting there. And he gets to take a car home, a truck home, whatever, a vehicle. So back and forth to work and in his car, that, that's an industry standard, take home vehicles. I think the only ones that don't do it is Ponce Inlet and the Shores in this county. They're the only ones. Well, so what I'm saying well, there's is... There's for law enforcement, and, and unfortunately, according to this Indianapolis plan... We're not talking Indianapolis plan. We're talking when they're working. Lee gets to take that home because he's going to be back at 0700, whatever his shift is, to 7 o'clock at night. Well, also, they, they put him out there for... And Ray calls him and says, hey... Well, the, well, the, the, the well, let me finish, huh? Well, here's the let me, well, let me finish. I'll let me finish. Okay. I'm, just, I'm right. just trying to give you a little illustration so you, 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 you get what I'm talking about. So Ray calls me at 6 o'clock on a Friday and said, man, somebody banged you and I need you in all Well, let's, let's, let's in his pocket if he said, okay, I'll be there. I've got a county vehicle. I'm <coughs> your gas. It don't matter. And what so, do I tell the, uh, where he was supposed to work, what they do for a vehicle that he has now? But do they need that vehicle in New Smyrna? Yes. Vehicles are assigned to a zone, not a person. But I'm, t I'm talking. I'm talking any vehicle you have there, pickup truck, or anything. It doesn't have to be. He's not law enforcement like he is, you know. So that's what I'm asking. I mean, if seven days is too much, when you come back with something that, I mean, this happens quite a bit, and I understand it has to happen sometimes. But look at it from their perspective. Have some empathy from a guy who lives in the south end of the county who's working there, and all of a sudden, bang, 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 all weekend he's back and forth. And you got to have it. But there should be some kind of in there working with us to make it less egregious to the guy, either financially, 50 miles round trip in his own car. I, I think you guys you know, come up with something. Is F for permanent transfers, or does, is F for a temporary change in assignment uh, for operational needs? Well, what, what does F really address? Well, let's read it. In as far as possible, employees covered by this agreement shall be given 80 hours notice of change in their regular hours of work. I'm so changing that's, your schedule, Joe. Okay, so I'm that's not weeks, that's not the example you'd use. That, that's sort of a permanent or we're changing your work schedule. That, that's not an that's not a, a temporary that's what I'm not Friday talking or about. Saturday, totally different. right? So that's okay. why that's why I'm asking because what we're talking about F. So I was just trying to just and I'm asking because how does F relate to E on page 17? Because in E you're asking to bid on shifts and in F you're capitulating to a transfer and just well, saying we just want to be notified in seven days. And if operation room <clears> has to change. People retired, fired, leave, separate service for whatever reason. Well, we, we need to fill that shift. So, if in fact I'm the guy, low, you have to change my shift because I'm lowering the totem pole and say, hey, Joe, well, your last one in, I got to change your shift. Uh, I'm, but I'm going to give you two weeks because it could be a child care issue, it could be some kind of issue with your family that you have to do something. I think you can bid a shift, but. You know, we know operationally okay. we might have to change it, but at least give me two weeks if you're going to change it on me so okay. I can make other arrangements. understand. So, Tom, uh, under F still, and he says, the beach patrol, uh, beach safety employees covered by this family will be given seven days notice for a different duty station. Well, just asking seven days too much, but come up with something. I hope you can realize from their pain that this, we, can, we can do something. Friday and it's New Smyrna. They all understand. But it's it's then you gotta make a guy go fifty miles round trip. Maybe he doesn't. But I'm saying it does happen quite a bit in the high time of the summer, I'm sure it does. Guys, you gotta move guys all the time, guys and girls all the time, to make sure you have adequate coverage. 
or asking for something that makes it a little bit easier for these guys. Whether it's, hey, if I got to move the woman and it's documented, we're going to give you a stipend, or we're going to let you use an extra car we have for the weekend, something like that. That's all. If you can come back, let's think outside the box. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll consider it. We'll look at it. There's a swapping of shifts. Plus, that all has to be approved. Uh, because I know what happens there. Uh, <coughs> Brian and I switch, and I don't pay back Brian, and that could be a little problem with the employees. So it gives you some parameters there. You've got to do it within 14 days, pay them back, or whatever it has to do with all the approval the boss written approval that they can swap shifts. And we're asking under K that a little differential pay for people that work nights and just graduated as we go through this contract, starting at 50 to 60 to 75. On that, we'll move on to page 44, Article 23, Fiscal Examination for Workers' Compensation. We're asking that if you're injured in the line of duty, if you're permanently disabled, you get 100% while you're out with that. If they can't, you can't find a light duty station for them, which I know they do now. I think we had conversations about that. Two-thirds pay. No pay for seven days. You get nothing. Well, you can use your leave. I, I just don't think that's fair. If I get hurt in the line of duty, I can use my pay. But if you're out for an extended period of time, it's reimbursed. It's reimbursed yeah. reimburse back to you. Well, the law says that. It must be fair if the law did it. All legislators agree to that. Yeah, that's why we have nine people in the Supreme Court. <laughs> that's good. They haven't struck it down. Yeah. I know. <laughs> they are. So, I understand what you're saying. I well, I'm understand the saying that an officer, and I, and I can tell you, new smart officer right now, broke his back in training. Yeah, he used his own leave. It's all gone. What does he do now? He does not pay his mortgage, he does not pay his children. What does he do? We all have, we all live paycheck to paycheck, unless you're like Tom, you're healthy, and you just, that's you're on a budget, and all of a sudden you're out there and you get hurt, whatever it means, serving the public, and oh, my family's gonna go without, I can't pay a mortgage payment, a car payment to feed my kids. I, I, I don't think the citizens would put up with that. And they're not educated enough know what happens to police. So they do when they get killed. Jeffrey Pine got killed two years ago and his wife and children left destitute because he went the FRS investment side. They had to change law and uh, legislation. I, I, I bet if they go out and look, there's about $700,000 worth of uh, benefits police officers get. Okay, well, that takes a while. Uh, so there, there's a lot out there. I mean, and, and the public doesn't know that. Uh, when uh, I tell the public that, they're like, what? But that's when they start killed. aiming at everything they get. That's what making the ultimate sacrifice. And, uh, and I say, well, <coughs> disability. And, uh, it's still lags behind. Disability is, well, what happens if I get disabled off the job? Well, that's a whole other answer. What's the difference? It's still, their family's not eating. It's the same scenario. Listen, if Gary gets up on the roof at 53, tries to fix something, falls off, and I break my neck. That's on me. Well, but I uh, hire the deal is a young guy to get up to our contract. You know, if you got disabled, you'll get benefits under the workman's comp law that's set up to give you the benefits, what those are. And if he's not getting any, if he's not getting anything, then they must have said it wasn't a workers' comp injury because I can't, I can't fathom him not getting something if it was a workers' comp injury. Workman's comp. I'm just asking the one. county to supplement that a little bit. Nobody, whoever gets injured in the line of duty, helping the public, should ever have to take a nickel out of their pocket 
ever. Well, I understand your position, but ours is we think it should be what the state law is. the law. And I think it's a big hope of the law is that you can use your leave to supplement the difference. With and then if it goes beyond seven days, you know, you go back to day one and pay. So you get your leave back. And then, if there's a difference of six, six and two thirds, and a lot of these folks will work, if they work overtime, they're already getting the max anyway. But if, if not, they can supplement the difference. So the county does go above and beyond. And that's why we give a generous leave package that most organizations don't give. Unlimited amount of cruel leave. And it's that, very and that generous. That can be sucked up real quick. And I, and I get it. Generous. You've been asking for uh, illustrations or problems all morning. And I just gave you one. Yeah, you did. Marshall Williams and New Smyrna, out of time. What does he do? Well, I broke understand. his back in training, training other officers to do a good job. And I had to go in there and negotiate. Well, I so the guy don't lose his house. Okay. But you can't, you know. And I'll tell you this, and we're going to say it. Can't do it for the extreme. Think things are going to happen, but there's a law set up to do all that. If he's work hurt on the job, there are workers' comp benefits. He's getting something. Yes, he is. He's getting something. So I know he's getting something at the workers' comp, and then you know how cheap it is, Tom. And I can probably price it for you. you if the city of Edgewater does it, they uh, and I'm negotiating that actually that there is a little supplement to the 66 and two thirds that they get. It's very cheap. Very cheap, a little supplement in Colorado. We have a, now, if you have a light duty, we have I know something. Brian's been on them, maybe probably everybody yeah, in this office on this table. That. But in light duty, but we that's what you can do over there that you'd save you, let people work the desk or whatever. So they're all workers' comp. And that's what you want. You want them to work as comp as soon as possible. If they're, if they're workers' comp, we have light duty. But we're not going to have light duty for people off because then they can become workers' comp many times. Say that again. They're off-duty injuries. We really don't have the county. Oh, yeah. That's, a, and, and that's, that's not an argument. And uh, they're on duty. But my deal is is we have long-term disability. The county does. But Edward or New Smyrna probably didn't have that. We have that. So we don't see that why we're going to pay 100% when we provide long-term disability. Uh, employees is that for a price? You have to pay that? No. You get the employee that. pays for short-term if they want it. But once it becomes long-term, <coughs> you pay for that, and it kicks in. But if they want to make that gap, they pay for that. Gap insurance. You know? So if they want to have short-term disability, they pay for that. Or they can say they'll try to use their leave if they have enough leave. It depends. Uh, so we, they pay for that piece, but long-term, if they're long-term, like you just said, the county's got that covered. I don't know if you knew that. We had long-term disability. Oh, I, I'm sure county. you had something. Yeah, paid by the county, which is unusual. A lot of places don't have that. Another thing is people don't compare when they compare in other organizations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there anything else in there you have a problem with? We'll, be, we'll have our proposal on that one. Uh, you talked about the take-home car program. Well, let's go back. I just wanted to touch on 46, uh, the last one for about skin cancer screening annually. What do, what do we do now for the employees? We provided it and no one would attend, nobody so attended. we stopped doing that. The physician would show up and nobody would attend. And so the physician stopped there. Don't we all provide sunscreens, all the clothing, sun shirts, shirts umbrellas, sunscreens, umbrellas. Well, I can show you myself that nice scar right there, squamous cell was cancer. So uh, I have a proponent. Well, we provide a lot of I stuff for that. I have through this gun, the skin cancer, and I went from young. Yeah, who cares? But now I've got my 50, and all of a sudden it starts popping up. If, uh, if no one's attending, why not? And you're already paying for the physician to be there. Then why not make it mandatory and make them attend on duty? We did that. And instead of writing everybody up, we just canceled doing it. We would have had to write up 90% of our staff because I think we had like six people show up. So you made it mandatory and no one went? Nope. Well, that's a disciplinary issue. I mean, well, I mean this was years ago before we even, and we continued hazard. to do it 
on a voluntary basis after that instead of... Well, we're providing sunscreen to all of the, you know, everything we can to do that. And uh, we got a very good insurance program, better than most... I challenge against any city, any public organization, anywhere around. Low co-pays, then get in and go do this. You know, at, some, at some point, when an employee will take care of themselves. And I don't think there's you know, another lifeguard agency that has But we um, try to provide it. everything else. We want the sunscreen, we want the shirt, we, do, we try to do all that. Umbrellas, we try to get them all this stuff. And then we provide a good insurance. And Ms. Winning really assisted me keep a good insurance program. In fact, okay. you're going to be seeing an app pretty quick come out. It's going to help you be able to find anything that Joe and his group developed. Uh, I'll show you. It's going to come out here in a couple of weeks. And some of you folks, I don't know if any of you are on the committee has seen it so far. Yeah, that's already out, isn't it? Yep. This app, are you going to see it come up? You can find anything about the insurance, doctors, you put in here uh, health care, doctors, tells you right here specialty. You name the specialty, there it is. You click on it. All right, let's just say you want an allergy. Allergy within 51 miles, I can do it by a map or I can do it by the name of the doctors and tell you how far it is. And you just click on it, it's going to give you a map. We've done everything we can to try to help employees find everything. Everything you want to know, every document. Good psychiatric help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it, it's got everything. So we want employees to know that, hey, you know, we're trying to take care of them. All the documents, all the plans, everything's there. Okay. So some of the stuff you all wanted in here, to say you get copies, they're already online, but they're really going to be easy to get to now. Super easy. Good. All right. Take home car program. Yep. You're start Well, we know that that's going to be a challenge when you start something because you just don't have enough cars. So how do you remedy that? It's usually on a seniority basis. Uh, and we just put something in there. No bargaining employee in the take home vehicle program. We authorize this print. Take, transport any passenger except on the following conditions. Approved right along. Dropping your kids off, going forward to work, daycare. Uh, when the officer is on official on call status. Uh, if he's on call out and about, uh, he wants to go to a restaurant with his wife or run down to the Winn Dixie, uh, you know, be okay if he has a passenger because he's on call anytime. What are you going to do with his passenger? Drop him off at the house. We don't have any employees that are on call after the beach closes. People that come in off duty are the people that already have the take-home vehicles. Okay. There is no on-call people after the beach closes. You don't have like somebody on call for traffic homicide, somebody gets run over at night. Nope. On the beach. Nope. What do we do? have an investigator that comes in. You do have THIs. We no, have that's two. on call, isn't it? Yeah. Our investigator is always on call. And he has a car. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, what, that's what I'm talking. The, he has a Josh, our investigator is not THI. Doesn't have a THI. <clears throat> I believe THIs. We have FHP. Do it correct. Mm -hmm. FHP yeah. does all our THIs. You have two THIs in the department. Okay. Uh, and just the, the willful negligence, uh, the car can be pulled from you. Any infraction? I think it's something you need to work towards. I know it'll probably take a couple of years to get the vehicles. We understand that. But it's something that these guys feel very passionate about. Especially moving from duty station to duty station. What do you think? Well, we think the people's got the vehicles have got vehicles. You know, I think we've addressed that already. I mean, these folks. Are but let's say Ms. Driscoll, she works what, 8 to 5, Monday to Friday? So her car just sits in her driveway. Does a county vehicle going to be? I get called out for drug tests, I get called out for accidents, I get called out. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying normally 8 to 5, anybody that works in the office, I know rank has its privileges, lived in that world, but this is one of these things that I, I so let's start small, use the vehicles we got, and build upon it. You know, a three year program or something, I understand that. It's I don't see where. 
right now there's a need for that vehicle out there other than the ones they're doing. They have the people that need to do it to get called out, and that's why they're taking them or they wouldn't have them. Well, overnight, how many cars sit in a parking lot? Or sit in the salt. And so it's the salt air where somebody could bring it inland to, to land or to bury or well, somebody got to pay for the gas and the maintenance on that. Y'all gonna pay the gas and the maintenance on it? Oh, you are. I know. <laughs> then you got a guy that's then you got a guy that can come back in into, can quickly get the jump in the car and go back to work. He's called back in, he's already ten eight in the car. It's a great advantage. The neighbors love to see cop car. Yeah, a cop car. It's be certain they're gonna deter anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to say, I can do anything I want here. That's a big service that, you know, that, that, you know, they're not going to think that. Well, I'm just asking that you come back at something, we start something somewhere. You got cars that are sit overnight. We don't want them to see as police cars. We want them to be beach service cars, what they are. And we don't yeah. think them sitting with sit where they are. The maintenance on them, not maintenance. There's no gas. And on a hope somebody may get called out. They don't really get called out. I mean, these folks get called out. Sheriff's deputies don't get called out. Hmm? Sheriff's deputies don't get called out. Cars sit in the driveway. Well, that's an Indianapolis program. <clears throat> and one of the deals that they did, I don't agree with, is that it's a deterrent for crime because it is a police car. Mm -hmm. B service is not a police car. Does it have anyway. police in it? It says law enforcement on the side. And, uh, but the deal is, is yeah, and, and those folks in Indianapolis plan, if you go do some research about it, is supposedly it's, it's not a pool car. As a result of a pool car, they keep it up better. And it maintenance and it stays longer. And it deters crime. They do all that. They say they do all that stuff with it. Our cars last for three to four years in their junk because they sit out in the salt 24 hours a day. And they don't get used for half of that time. I mean, why don't we talk maybe about the possibility of a hybrid program of some kind, which is, I think is what you're trying to bring up, is you work three sh you work three days in a row in the same place, take your car home, and drive it back to work the next day. It's just it's going to stop it from rusting. I mean, that's the argument well, we're using. It, it, it's not going to stop it from rusting any faster than you drive up down the beach every day and get salt under it. I, you're I, driving it over to, over, opinion, over, to over down to, and if you live in New Smyrna, and you live whatever, you're not that far off the beach anyway. But anyway, it's already got that salt and sand all up in it. So unless you take it home and you wash it every day and you get all the salt and the sand off of it, it's not going to... Well, we do. We wash them every day. And it's not going to just deter it from, from rusting any faster. Uh, you know, there's folks that live on beach side that tell me all the time their vehicles rust way faster than the folks that don't. And so I don't know if that's true or not, but I hear people tell me that. And they go, all right, all right. Okay, I just know going to the beach, sitting over there close to it, your car looks like a film all over it. Y'all know that. Sure. And, uh, it, you know, and, and it, the next day. But just to take people to have a vehicle to go home, it's not a wise decision of, of dollars being spent to fix the vehicle, to maintenance, the gas. It, it may be great for the employee, you know, yeah, that's great, but it doesn't do anything for anybody else. And, and I understand they want one. I, you know, I understand that totally. But is there a, bus a real business reason? I will listen to some of the stuff that you said earlier. But just to take one home and take it home, no. But it's a, it's a perk. It's, it's a, a little extra perk you get. While you're working. And I would say on the day off, just why, let's stop simple. You work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Take it home. It's sitting up in the park. I don't know. I mean, the guy's not going to East Orlando. You might be going uh, five miles away. You know, let, let's, I keep using Lee, I'm and sorry. We, but Lee lives in Edgewater. Never got more he goes risk to it, so he goes five miles, and 10 miles from a round trip. And he's he a half a gallon. It, and he takes it out, and we drive him down the road, and he gets in an accident. What are we going to do then? Well, that wouldn't have been an accident had it been out. You're self insured. Yeah. We're going to and he, and he, and he but it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been on the road. And if he was, had no business of being on the road, oh, other than it was a perk. So we tell the taxpayers, oh, guess what? We just totaled out a vehicle over here because it was a perk. Uh, as so a citizen, is not going to have a problem with somebody taking their car home. You yeah. take a car home, a lot of everybody them takes a car home. Just like if they did if they they done an accident, her, why is there a car on the road? Why? Because she gets called out you know, to do all these How things. How many times did you get called out last year? Um, probably 10, 15 times. Ten times. Wait, that's what she had. Have to come that's her job description. I understand. Right. What I'm asking for is, let's let's start. Can we tell these folks they got to. You say no. 
we're saying it's not, let's just stop the cars you got and work on it a little bit. When do they Bother. get paid? Do they get paid in the driveway or do they get paid when they get to work? What's that? When do they, get, when they start getting paid? Well, what do you want? I'm asking you. Oh. I, no, say, we, we I we said they get paid really when they get to their duty station. Okay. Uh, so then, the if they, lot, so then the if they get an accident, so they're, they're not, not on, on duty. Clock. What's that? So then, then if they get an accident in the vehicle, they're not on duty. Okay. That becomes an issue. What's that issue? Because they're, no, they're not on duty, then they're on their own time. All right. And they get in an accident and they get injured. Okay. okay. Well, that's no different than when you get an accident. I'm salaried. I'm on call 24-7. No, but you're going to use the same benefits that we're going to use. Yeah, but we're not going to expand it. Uh, you know, we've got what we need to do, and if we we see somebody in the bargaining unit that needs one, we'll come to y'all and say somebody needs one, and we'll do it. There's business reason. We'll do that until we see that need. We don't see that need. Well, and, you know, we're asking you to come back with something. Okay. And if it's no, it's no. Okay. But yeah, as you can see, this has been drawn out because this this is a linchpin of this contract that they want to be treated. Like other people in the county. <coughs> take, 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 take. I get people get transferred from one side of the county to the other in revenue all the time because they got somebody. Yeah, that's the job they took in there. Yeah, that's exactly right. You're exactly <laughs> right. And so a lot of other people do that. A lot of other people do. And if they want to be law enforcement, they need to go be law enforcement. I, you know, I hate to say that. I hate to see them go do it. But if they really want to be law enforcement, maybe they need to go, go be law enforcement. But they're not. They're beach safety. Look, this is. A, a fantasy that you're talking about. We're law enforcement officers with countywide jurisdiction. The fact that you obviously don't believe that for some reason doesn't change the fact that we're law enforcement officers with law enforcement responsibilities. All the law enforcement officers that work on the beach feel this way strongly. Doesn't mean that we don't think that we should provide that customer service to the visitors of the beach. Doesn't mean we don't put the life saving responses we have, you know, paramount. But it doesn't change the fact that we're cops. We're still cops. Yep. Okay, I just want to make sure that's understood because yeah, yeah, it is, it's important and, and, and to the employees. Right. But for us, what we, the kind of model we're running there, the benefits that we're giving there is a different model than a police department. Right, but we're still And, and what we're trying to hear, what I'm hearing is, is well, I, want, I want the same kind of model that they got over there, over here, and get the same things they get, but it's a different model. And we're saying it, it is a different model. And as a result, there's different benefits and different things that go with those models. And just because you have a certification doesn't mean you get all those things. And and that's you know we you know we, we set that up and, and we're, we we look at it. Well, I understand that, but could we have a lot of people that go back and forth to the other side of the county if they have to and they have a need for them to work in a division or department? They got a need over there, you go. Property appraiser, you got a need over there, you go. You know revenue. We got several offices all over the county: Orange City, New Smyrna. Daytona, here, we need you in one of those other offices, you go. And you know, firefighters, you show up this morning, we need you in another station, you go. And you use your vehicle. And you stay there for 24 hours or longer. But they got to go. Well, you go and work eight hours, and you got to go somewhere, you go and work eight hours, and you leave and go back. And they go for 24, that's their shift. Yeah, it's not the same. And, All right, enough uh, said. But they, but they are. It's, uh, it's not the same, but they're still traveling. They're still having to do. It's the same issue that I'm hearing is i got to go do all this, so I need this, but other people do it. And then you point to some who do a little different say, well, I want that. Well, we got a lot to do the other. And, and the model that we got, we, we understand what, what you want. We understand why you want what you want. I understand. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. 48, special assignments. And, and number three, it should be a toxilizer. I'm not an initializer. People that have those extra skills, extra tools in the tool bag, then not everybody does. We're actually going to address all this stuff before, and we meant to, and we didn't do it, right? Before y'all filed a petition. When they filed a petition, we didn't do it. But our view of this would be flat dollar amounts. In fact, they'd already written an SOG on it to be flat dollar amounts. So we'll be talking about that. We don't think it should be percentages, but. Why? It's a. It should just be because why should one first because they've been here longer make more money than another get more doing well, the same job. Been here longer. Doing the same job. Yeah. If you make the flat dollar amount, it is comparable. It's the same. It's the same skill. But I, I've been here longer. Well, I, mean, I have more experience. That doesn't mean well. I've seen some people been here 20 years. They've been here the first day. Yeah. Now they got the first day experience over and over and over. And it, it, 
your seniority don't tell you a whole lot. I mean, well, just you know, speaking hey, to that. You know, ask, go to the NFL and ask what seniority does for you. Don't make an FTO. Seniority. You don't make an FTO that doesn't know what they're doing. Is doesn't have the skill set to teach people to transfer information. But if they're going Being to an FTO is an inherently long, drawn out, you must have somebody well, I think they should get paid something for it. Well, yeah, we're not saying they shouldn't get paid, it's how they get paid for it. Well, you've got to come back with a dollar yeah, amount. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. Because we also think it, we're going to try to install at some point that we've been trying so, for several years. Is we haven't got to it, but hopefully the next year we're going to get to it. I've got it changed now that Angela can free up to put component pay in, which means all your things like this will show up separately on your check. Good. Well, if it's a, if it's a, a percentage, so is there anything other than this check. that you were going to address in the assignments? Yeah, we'll, we we'll address that. But I mean, the ones that I got here, SIT, FTO, Toxalizer, is there any others that pop out that you know of that you do? Well, I mean, division wide, yeah, there's quite a few other positions that are special. PHI doesn't get anything right uh, now. PIO, my oh, position. PIO. Um, the invest yeah. no, no, I'm actually the training specialist. There you go. So, and then don't you get 5%? Okay. Yeah, I do. But I'm just saying, you, he's asking other special pay positions. Oh, that they're are not, not on there. Yeah, yeah. Not, there's a lot that aren't okay. right. yeah. Well, they'll come back with all those. Um, yeah. Next page. Merit system. I just want to share Other duties. Um, so sometimes these these uh, the bargaining unit members here are required to perform janitorial, maintenance, construction, uh, on building ground, building grounds, vehicles, transport animals. Uh, what we're asking them, they do the. Now, well, that's the, the, model we got. the model we got. I don't like your model. I know, that's the problem. You came to work for a place that's got this model and they put in the model, you don't like the model. I'm not model. a painter, I'm not an electrician, plumber, or carpenter. You have people in the county payroll that do all those things. Let them do their job and let us do well, it. Sometimes I've done janitorial duties here, sometimes there's stuff broken, somebody couldn't get over, I'll fix it personally. Fixed it with the bathroom and did and cleaned up. Good I actually you. did a lot of that stuff, even now. Yeah, Don't look at anybody, Tom. <laughs> she, was, she was saying other duties of the sun. I'm going where they are. And, and, but that's part of the model that we have out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it makes it work. And, uh, you know, we're not getting to this it's so rigid you can't do anything. Well, all the stuff that you want to do just costs more money. Okay, we hire more people. That means less money. And that means less things. And all the stuff that y'all want, train, you name it all, it's just, it's just dollars. That's all it is. It just keeps adding up and adding up and adding up. Taxpayers will pay. Yeah. They don't mind. Yeah, they don't mind. They don't squeeze them for another yeah. half percent of the sales tax. Yeah, you put it out there and see how quick they jump on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I understand what you're saying, but that's not part of that model. There is no other employee you got in the county that has this wide variety of skill set anywhere. Anytime, any place. Uh, I challenge you to tell me right now who, other than these fine men and women, has more skills than anybody else in this county. From law enforcement uh, to saving lives to EMT to paramedics, and they all do it. And then you want them to go paint a building. I got people. Well, it depends where you're at. I got people. It depends where you're at and what you do. I got people in here that's got multiple skill set that do multiple things in multiple disciplines and a lot of other areas or are specialties. Just totally specialists. It takes you lots of years and knowledge to get that. We got road and bridge. We got people out there that's got specialties in chemicals. You know, know how to operate certain special equipment. They, they've been trained on how to do. I can you name all the stuff that they do, but I, I see it all. All these specialties they got, some of them's got four or five different specialties that you'd have to train people. So it's not unusual. And everywhere I work, you see that. Everybody's got theirs, depending where you are. And some people have them and some people don't. I personally try to get my folks in here, and Chandra can tell you, is if we can, is try to get them to do as much as they can do to learn as much as they can do to all the skill sets. 
so you become better at what you do, and we can provide a better service to the public, and to the and not only to the public, but to the departments that we service. That's just part part of it, and, and most corporations and companies try to do that. You know, and I, I'm going to simplify this a little bit though. So, what you're proposing that if, if a lifeguard tower, for example, that's something that's that can break. We all know that. So that that lifeguard tower breaks, and that lifeguard's on it or can't be on it because it's broken. Nobody here is going to try to field a repair. That's that's what you're proposing, right? That's correct. Okay, so what do we do then? Call county maintenance and come fix it <laughs> on Sunday afternoon. That's what they're there for. That's their job skill. That's their job. Do so their that lifeguard's out of service and not on that tower until they get there. That's what you're well, saying. It's right? going to be there. It's actually in the uh, in the BSS job description. It's in the job also. I don't care where it is. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. Yeah, I, I find it you don't agree with things? I find it insulting that it's even in here. Right. What's that? I find it insulting that it's even proposed. To be honest you with do? You. I do. Why? This well, is a hands-on organization Never take that's always prided right? itself on on being able to, to do these things. So I, I find it, I'm shocked that, you know, repairs, which I understand can be major or even minor, that we're just call somebody. Well, then maybe we provide some definitive language on what should be included and what shouldn't. Yeah. The only one I really have a huge problem with is the transporting of animals because the county has multiple, multiple departments that do that. I mean, you have, you have a, yeah, I know, but you have a marine science center that is funded by the county that has staff that are trained to transport animals. You have animal control officers who are trained to transport animals. That's their job. I mean, I don't mind doing it every once in a while, but we do it all the time. There are certain times of year where transporting animals is all we do. And it's it's crazy, especially with sea turtles where there are very strict federal rules pertaining to where they go and when they get there. And what you're talking about is a public service model. And what I got to do, if I get a wash back sea turtle in, we got to stop everything we're doing and make sure that this little sea turtle gets up to a certain location that is sometimes many miles away within two hours, three hours. And when we have people within the county who, that's their only job. That's their job to do that. So the versatility thing. If we don't take thing, care of those sea turtles, y'all won't have a job. They won't, let, any, they won't let anybody on the beach. Nobody's nobody saying don't, think, don't take care of the sea turtles. You know, They're so, working on that now. You know, so <laughs> there won't be anybody out there. So then there wouldn't be a need. I understand that. But sometimes you got to look at the bigger picture to say, that's if I'm not doing all that. But let's let's, I, I let's use folks, our they, people for what to train. Well, I, I what's their them. what's their priority in saying all one? Yeah. Priority is public safety. Without problems. And great. Don't take it jobs. personal. I'm just asking. This is what we propose. You come back with something. Right. Right. That's what we do. I got it. That's you got it. What we've always done. So well, it's different. Maybe it hasn't been right. There's also a period of time of after <laughs> Labor Day right. through the first of the year that really nothing's going on sure. the beach. That's when a lot of that stuff is done. What yeah. are they going to do then? I, I'm well, not saying not to do it. We won't hire, I'm saying we won't hire, we won't hire anybody. We don't need them. I mean, what last? Because if you're not going to do that, we, like could, we don't not need to hire other people to do other day. things. We were summer day. Who's doing maintenance on that summer day? Who's doing maintenance? Nobody, because we were slammed. Right. We have when was the last days. time you were pulled for maintenance? When was the last time you were pulled for maintenance? It's been a long time. There you go. It's been a long time. You don't want to count CZ pools. Well, that was all right. Number two, we got it. But what I understand, a beach safety specialist. I picked um, up several hundred that day. Do they do they write citations? Carpenters? They have the some ability. Of some, some of them do. Have the We've had a problem finding a class that um, can teach it, and actually, our training officer, captain, our supervisor, just found a uh, class that um, he'll be able to teach. So we've been working on We're it, and some of them can. Mark can write one. Lee can write one. Okay. And beach safety specialists will be no longer assigned for clerical roles, front desk, reception, schedule. Is this light duty also? And workman's that? comp. Does that no, include why they're on light duty on workman's comp? Because uh, that's why we use Light them. duty, you put them where you need and you can put not them. If we, not, not the if contract you says you can. Not if you can. Oh. Well, that doesn't say light duty. Says they will that not just do says it. says if they're working as a beach safety specialist, you'll use them as their you know, what their job is, not like hey, it's I'm going to make you do filing today because it's slow. I have someone out on FMLA who's pregnant and she can't go out in the field, but we can put her in scheduling at the front desk, so I can't do that anymore. Well, I, I, that's that's an exigent circumstance, I would think. Well, like I said, when you got language that says you can't, and somebody argues later you can't, you can't. 
and may not even be the pregnant person, somebody else that just wants to be, you know, a lot. And I've seen that, so you can't do that. That language says that. Yeah. So you know, we've got to be careful. But anyway, sure. I understand what you're asking for there. What is this for? Beach fishing should be eligible for overtime. What do you mean by that? Are they, are they eligible for yeah. overtime now? Yeah. I, I don't know. Always have been. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them don't right. pick it up. For certain circumstances, I would like to see that be broadened a little instead of always doing that downfill. Sometimes when you have, you know, the 44 or, or even like an 8-hour 53 that's not available, may, may, maybe reach for us. I mean, we can do about 80% of the job. Throw us in a unit, let us patrol, instead of always, you know, calling in someone, paying more money for that officer to take it. Give us the opportunity to collect a little overtime doing this, especially in the off season. When everyone wants off in the off season, that's when we have no overtime opportunities, really. I, I don't disagree with that, but I'll just hold the phone here while I get the call from the supervisor saying, I need that person to be a Leo instead of just a body. And I, I don't mean that wrong when I say just a body, because uh, I, I don't disagree with you. And, but we can also upfill with a part-timer right. into your position who's also an EMT. Mm -hmm. right. So that's, a, but the overtime is there if we put it out there, but very rarely do I ever get a BSS offer to work overtime. Well, I, I mean, I would, I would take those kind of positions all the time if it was offered to me. I, so but picking it, positions that are not there. picking, but no, I mean, this time of year, th there isn't really any overtime for right. BSS, except for during special events, you know, like the, like the ski show or whatever, like that, the ski right. deal. But and that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the off season when the opportunities are made available for us. And they're there if they're available. I mean, if they're if if they if we have the need for it, we definitely put out for it. It's, but like I said, we can, we upfill also, and it doesn't make sense to pay you overtime when I can pay a part-time to do that same exact job because they're just as qualified. Oh, no, I understand that, but at the same token, it, I mean, I would think financially it would make more sense to put me in that position over finding a senior officer to come and fill that position. Yeah, if you're but, as qualified. But you're, you're, you're right. I know some of the supervisors are like, I need a Leo, I need a Leo, and maybe that's something yeah, we discuss inside you're the you're division. trying to make everybody yeah. happy, so yeah. it's hard to do. So. But we put it out there. Yeah. All right, what's to number five? What's, what's that about? Uh, the supervisors, like guys who is, will make the work schedule, shall make the work schedule. What's the, what's the problem with it now? Well, they feel as though this work schedule is better suited to people that are on the ground, I guess you would say, not in an office. We used to do it this way. They used to do it that way. It's been changed, and it's just not working. So they feel so the guys that are for the long, a long, long time, because they work in individual districts, or no, they're not districts, but they were zones, and so they don't see the big picture of if they want to be able to give everyone their day off. I, if I approved a vacation, I approved it by using their extra person to cover another ship for someplace else, because we don't have hundreds of employees like say another department does, the sheriff's department does. Our, we our, don't have it. Our scheduling is centralized, that, that is true, because we look at the whole beach and the priority of the positions on that beach. If if Stan takes a day off, we have to cover him. We don't have to pull some, his replacement from somewhere else. And that throws a whole scheduling out the window. Or if Stan's on vacation, we have to cover it. So if, say, say or whatever that, case maybe. Yeah, say um, Rick wanted to do his, his own and Stan is in, works in his district, and Stan calls out sick, who's he going to get to cover it? Well, if he only works out of his own district. I'm not saying the supervisor can't work with administration to find a solution to that problem. You know, I mean, how did we do it before? It always seemed to work to me. I mean, the scheduler, the scheduling department has always done it. No, there was the, not. The, the supervisors used to, to submit them, but it is, wasn't always what they gave. They would give it to us, and it was a guideline to go by, but it most of the time it was changed by what was needed for the whole beach and a whole because we are Volusia County, not one district. We, yeah, I know that. But this is going back to like what we talked about earlier about discretion, flexibility yeah. for supervisors to make operational decisions which impact their line staff. And maybe we could uh, fluctuate the language to just insinuate that supervisors should have some input or some uh, involvement, some responsibilities in scheduling. We've done it in the past. We just we, we can do that, especially in, in the season when you get a lot of your your seasonal part-time stuff. Absolutely, that's all your control. Towers, everything. That's that's always been the case. We do a draft every year for them. Well, let's come back with some language. Right? You know, we're here, you're there. Let's come here. You know what I mean? That that 
represents what we both want to get it to a true place. Absolutely. Why is this draft on it? Huh? It's why is this draft? Uh, the rebid leave. Work on it. Okay. No problem? Yeah. There's a problem? Yeah, yeah. We, got, we already got it. We already have one. Oh, mm -hmm. just we want it in the contract. Mm -hmm. But it's more Different than what we got. Uh, that's a no. That's a no. That's a no. Why? Because we got one. All right, let me talk about the bereavement well. leave. Uh, it's in hours, correct? Mm -hmm. 48 hours. Uh, you take 48 hours. How many days off do you get? It's 24 hours. It's 24, it's 24 hours. hours. It's 24 hours. How many days off do you get? Well, we, okay. we, we, that's just based on your schedule. Well, I know, but I get 24 hours of bereavement. I get two days. Okay. That's not the same as somebody who works at the tag office. They get a lot more. So it, it is a difference that, sh that should be addressed. I mean, they get more days than we do. Because you have, we work longer shifts. We have eight-hour employees that would get three days. Is that, is that what you're getting at? No, yeah, that's what I'm getting at, the eight-hour employees. But you have eight two days, days off before and after, so in reality, you have Five six days. days. It depends. Six. Depends on the schedule. Well, like I said, it does well, depend. Well, if it's a Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. It's written that way. It's yeah, if it's, a Friday, you know, if it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have three work days in a row. So we don't get that benefit in that time. It's, it's just a difference. You know, what what don't you like about it? We allow people to that it's in there, or you don't like the 48 hours? Or? We like the policy we got. It's worked. People don't, you may not like it, but we allow them What's to the use their personal leave. It's, four, it's 24 hours, and it doesn't have immediate family. Is you know a, a co habit it, uh, you know. Uh, it's some, it's a if we have an employer, like. spouse, or any person in the car. Of the employee in a car. car? I don't know. Really. In a car. That's what oh. it says. In a car. In the care. Or the employee or permanently <laughs> residing with the employee. In the care. You know, well, it didn't say that. So we just got a lot of issues with that. Fantastic car. It's supposed to be care. But anyway, okay. We didn't know what that meant. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we got, we got the policy we got. It's, it worked overall for everybody. We got a lot of folks on 12 hours. <laughs> The change was ours. I mean, we were all. It equalizes it out. Yeah. It's the same amount of time. We were all eight hours. Those three days. days. Twelve hours is two days. The tips, uh, yeah. Same thing, but less days. Yeah, it's, it's less. It's less days, but that's what you need is days. It's you don't days. need hours. You need days. We and usually anyone who's on bereavement has gotten what they wanted. As far as people on eight hours sometimes complain that you all get five days and, and they get three. That's the job they took. And that's right, and that's why we don't want to change it. Absolutely. <laughs> They took it and they knew it. Same with you guys. You knew it. That's what it was. But it works. I'll put it this way: it's working. Uh, but if we were looking at this on and off, if we, we uh, we'd probably give you a need to on this one. If we change it, we'd, we'd change it for you. We would do one on that probably. Give you a need to on that. We change it for everybody else. We change it for you. See. Because we are looking at that on and off, uh, and that, may, that that could change in the next year, couple of years. But I know that was something on the radar to change. To be honest with you, but we haven't got to it because the other stuff keeps coming up like this. The other stuff, you know, the other deal we just keep doing, and we just did some stuff with the fire and all that, and finished, you know, extended their agreements and all kinds of stuff happened. But it is something that'll probably get picked up again and looked at. And if it does, we give you a me too. If we change it, we include you. We would make you do bargaining. Well, let's go to 52, Article 29. I think that's just the regular. One, I've never seen the one before, but I've seen the dues. Mm -hmm. So I understand the dues. Well, but let's read it. By entering into this collective bargaining agreement with the county of Volusia, know the director will have any right to take any action to resist the application of collective bargaining and or any collective bargaining agreement to the Beach Safety Division employees. Similarly, by entering into this collective bargaining agreement, the union does not waive any right to take any action to ensure the application of collective bargaining and Collective bargaining to be safety patrol. I think there are a lot of 
law on that already. I don't really yeah. know what that means. I think it's yeah. stuff you don't really know what it means. Yeah, it's not problems. Problems. Yeah. It's just something. Well, give it to the, the, the lawyer. lawyer. He'll make it easier. Yeah, I know. I, I just I'll think, just take I, it out. I, I just take yeah. it out because <laughs> it, it, then you just use the law. <laughs> easy. We know what the law is. There's been court, court interpretations over that. Uh, okay. yeah. And I understand we are due, so uh, mm -hmm. you want to start uh, us deducting the dues? I mean, you, uh, and you want us to start deducting the dues? Well, I got some applications. That's an important issue, right? Deducting the dues and how you want to do it? Yeah, I mean, once once we ratify this, then we start deducting. We just don't take any dues until we get a contract. Okay. All right. We bank. Sure, you want him to take vacation. Absolutely, yeah, that's what we want him to do. Absolutely. Yeah, if we want to, he wants each person wants to give an hour. I mean, that's what it calls for. We don't really agree with that. We just don't. We fundamentally don't agree with those. We say, hey, would you leave, to, leave to take time away from work and do not to do all that. We didn't set that set it up to say, you know, you can give it away to other folks. We don't have any of those. You, you can do. You, you got one. You do. So you have We got one, and we don't like that one. And that was given. He gets sick, years. and I, I want to donate some time to we the a lead bank. So no. Mark and no, we don't have that. What do you have them? They, they use their own lead. They don't have any lead. They don't have any lead. So I can't donate it to no. somebody from a county employee. No. Tom gets sick. No. No. Tom's running out of time. No. Tom's on his own. Tom's on his own. We got a very generous lead package. Very lead generous lead package. So no, we've known people to have some real maladies, and if I, if the county, I, know, I can't believe that every city county that I know has those, that they can go to that well, the, all the employees donating time. I've had them other places, I've had them not. I've had them where we had it, said we wish we never had it, because no, I the same, the only, the, you've seen them, the only employees got the same pretty soon. I'm tired of Tom abusing the, the blasted leap deal. Mm -hmm. He's constantly dipping the well, and then they keep wanting, and it turns into a big morale issue, a big deal, and then Charles, who's favored and loved, gets sick, and everybody wants to donate, and everybody wants to do it, and everybody does this, and everybody, I just... Passing yeah, during his car. Yeah, yeah, I think passing during his car. I've just seen them both ways. I think Jim Deneen has go to other places and seen them both ways where they... Yes, you know, I, it can I've go seen, both ways. I've seen it both ways. I've worked at places that, that, other, that didn't have it. I wanted one that had it, and I like to the one that had it. Everybody hated it. Management particularly hated because they had to try to administer it. And the employees liked it, but they hated it at the same time. 
They liked was, it, but they hated it. But, you, but what do you say? Um, but we didn't. We don't have one of those. By Brian's right. got ours, and he wants to give one. Or collectively, everybody in the bargaining unit. That's their time to give. That's that's up to them. It's an hour. ours to grant it. <laughs> yeah, oh yes, it is. That's nah, not right. What, why not? It's ours until it's kind of like an insurance policy. You gotta die to go get you know, a piece of life insurance to get it. I you can't say I gotta do it. Well, our deal is we go. We have a right to do, say if you're gonna take leave to grant it or not grant it. And if we grant it, we give you the time to, to spend. And you're saying, well, I'm not taking time off. I'm giving it away to somebody. It's like, well, why do we want to grant that? Because it's my business, not your business. And we're saying you're right, it is. Go do that on your own time. And if you want to pay for that, pay for it. But if you want to take time away from work to enjoy and to do what we really want you to do and refresh, we'll, we'll do that. That's how we see that. It's a, it's a fundamental philosophy difference. It's okay. a fundamental philosophy difference. So, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. <laughs> Okay, I understand the limitation on negotiation for article. And on retirement? What do y'all do now? Yeah, what, what do you do now? Somebody retires, you give them a shadow box and a weapon? No weapon. They get their badge and they get a retirement ID card. And it's 30 how years long, now. How long ago did we years, get? Unless, I mean, as a taxpayer, I've always thought, why don't we give away a gun? I don't get to take my desk out of here and haul it out for retirement. Why don't, why don't I get a gun as a taxpayer? Now i got to go pay for somebody else to get a gun. I'm just saying not only here, but everywhere I've seen that. A person and his gun is a sacred thing. Uh, it's still, it's a... It's a tangible object that when somebody's got to buy. Right. Now we got to buy them more and do it. And well, would you allow them to buy it? And uh, why are we going to do that? Would you allow them to buy it? I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to explore that. Would you do a shadow box? It doesn't affect me at all. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a whistle, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give him his whistle? Well, it's gold. We actually give him a golden whistle. We get a golden whistle. You do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. I understand that. We'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to still tend to them. Give them their back. You know, like when I retired, I got a really nice shadow box with all the chevrons and all the fruit salad and all the, you know, I got 13 commendations and meritorious series or what. And it just, you know, it's, it's not for my own edification to look at. I was great, but certainly to show your children and grandchildren, you know, I did something that not many people will do and not many people could do or wanted to do. But I did it. I did it well. I need something to an employee, and they recognize like that. Okay. It does. And everybody's the same. It's all. That's why we want to put it here, because we all know about personalities and directors. And this one always was a pain in my neck. I'm not giving up this. I'm not. Let's just have it in contract. You'll get a shadow box. You know, not to exceed the X number of dollars. And your badge, and whatever badges you had, and all those things. It just gives a nice send off to somebody. Okay. I understand what you're saying. We also give them a, uh, we do employee luncheon every, every year for people with service. Yeah, 10, 15, 20, 20 minutes. I understand that. Yeah. They have a very nice one, too. Yeah. And they get to bring uh, somebody with them, oh, I guess. Okay, drug and alcohol testing. How come uh, what's the problem with that? Y'all got 